You're listening to the most fraudulent F1 podcast with Dan, aka Engine Mode 11. I secretly moonlight as Helmut Marco at race weekends. And Blake, aka Break. Echo chambers of farts and idiots on Twitter after races. It's the Engine Breaking F1 podcast. Welcome to Engine Breaking, the ultimate podcast for Formula One enthusiasts. I'm your host, Break, resident meme maestro and racing aficionado. I bring humor and relatable content to keep your F1 timeline exciting. Hey, F1 fans, I'm Engine Mode 11, a tech enthusiast and Formula One geek. On Twitter, I dive deep into the cutting edge technology that drives the world of motorsport. Together, we're going to share our expert insight, comedic banter with billions of followers, and now we're bringing that same energy to engine braking, where we explore all things Formula One. Get ready for high-octane discussions on the latest news, race analysts, race analysts, fuck, we fucked up already, and the technological marvels that make F1 a captivating sport. <laughs> So we're going to add our own special flavor hmm, with a commentary behind the scenes stories in the lighter side of the racing world. And we'll keep you entertained while in the know. Join us on Engine Breaking, the podcast that takes you on a thrilling journey through the world of Formula One. From intense rivalries to heart stopping overtakes, we'll cover it all. So buckle up and tune into Engine Breaking. Get ready to immerse yourself in the exhilarating world of Formula One. Experience the thrills like never before. It's going to be a wild a wild ride, folks. Let's rev those engines. Vroom, 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 you like that? And dive into the action together. Mm. Your braking is not good. Uh, yeah, so that was a little bit of a gag. And if you're wondering, that introduction, somehow ChatGPT got us completely swapped up, whoever we are. Uh, I don't know who I am anymore. I was going to say. <laughs> I was like, you what? Put this in, you put this into ChatGPT and it's got us completely the wrong way around because it said, what am I? A tech enthusiast and Formula One geek. I'm a fuck. I'm a, a resident meme maestro. And like, come on. Like, that is literally swapped. So um, yeah. the, where that came from, I got I got to give credit. Um, I was hanging out with uh, Tim from the Motormouth podcast the other day and I was listening to some of their shows. You should check them out. Um, and we he's done that a couple times on the intro. I was like, I've got to try that. But at the same time, I, I got to give credit. That is that is fucking vibes. I was I did two episodes with them over the last week. A little main episode, a short and sweet one, a little Q and A's, but a uh, a riled wide. <laughs> Let's go. So I, I cannot do it. Wild ride. There we go. Nailed it. Nailed if it. If I can't do it properly, I'll I'll do wild wide like that. I, it's something that every happens now and again. I don't know. Oh, so, it's yeah. a wild wide. Mm. <laughs> so uh. This week's episode, we're going to fill you on what's happening behind the scenes and give you some racing aficionado bullshit or whatever that is. Uh, we're going to go into a Monaco race review. There's some, I think there's some juicy stuff from the Grand Prix and some shoulda, woulda, couldas maybe for uh, the Dark Lord himself. We've got a couple of gamers for Fraud Watch and a few uh, good boys to uh, toot toot. Um, Dan, we're going to talk about the Indy 500 as well. Fucking yeehaw, are I we? I tell you what. I fucking tell you what. Uh drivers start your engines meow uh and then we'll look yeah, at them the listen a couple of red flags and maybe a race might even break out who knows whoa whoa and then uh, we'll go into a barcelona preview but uh before we get into that dan why don't you tell us about a um your charity raising for samaritans a and the engine braking crews in the lama 24 hours i racing sim racing Talk to us. Yes, that happened this weekend, and it was far more uh, enjoyable and important than that shit show we call Monaco. Um, so it went really well. We finished uh, P6. The sister car finished P6. Uh, the main car finished P9. That may have something to do with the fact that I put it in the wall early in the morning. But you guys and were it, actually pretty... Well, you guys went P3 in class? Yeah, we were we were contending for a podium. Yeah, so yeah, man. No, we were doing well, and uh, all the boys that were driving picked themselves up. Um, they smashed it, and we got uh, one thousand and twenty pounds. So yeah, we beat the you, goal as yeah. well. Goal for a grand to Samaritans. That's awesome, man. That's but it was the hardest thing I think I've done in a long time, um, and may have even got a little bit emotional when it ended on stream. So if you want to laugh at that, you can go look at it on my uh, Twitch. That's wholesome as fuck, man. And if you guys are not following Engine Mode 11 on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube, uh, please do that now. 
right now. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on your drive to work, do not operate your phone while you're driving. But uh, if you do, if you are driving to work, give us a little toot toot, you know? Yeah, you know the vibes. But um, I, I could not commit to a 24-hour race during a race weekend because of my streaming commitments and having to do a shitload of data analysis, which has literally just gone out on my buy me a coffee. But I did a little uh, three hours of Watkins Glen with uh, Callum Races from Driver 61 and Overdrive on Saturday morning. And uh, it was insane. We spreadsheet ourselves into doing a stop less than everybody else. And we came out of our final stop in the lead. And then, oh, it was heartbreaking. Callum, Callum was so rapid and so consistent the entire race. And then probably uh, halfway through the final stint, the chickeny the, in the bus stop, the chicane in the bus stop, um, it moved. Somebody hit it before us and moved it out. And um, sure. we collected it. And then, so I was like, you know what? We'll tow it back. I'll, I'll hop in the car. And then I got a speedy in the pit lane black flag. Uh, so that was a stop. Well done. Yeah, terrible. And then I bend it on my outlap in the chicane, the chickeny. So I'm bummed. I'm bummed. But honestly, can we can we get some... We need to start an engine-breaking iRacing league. That we could, like... I'm sure we could find a night a week. We could do the podcast one night. And then uh, do a little bit of iRacing with the crew. So the mm. community, you guys, men and women... Boys and girls getting involved. If you're enthusiastic about sim racing, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, reach out on Twitter. We'll try and line something up. Right? Yeah. Maybe Sound good? for the bants, we maybe for the bants, we can do the podcast live from a car in while we're eye racing. That'll be. We can double it up. Yeah. Oh, um, that'd be fun. But hey, listen, you weren't available for this one. But good news. Talk to me. There's a 12 hour of Nurburgring event we've been invited to in October. Ooh. Ooh. So if you'd like to come and drive a GT4 with us, oh, you're in. Okay. We're not, we're not decided which one yet, but it's not going to be a 911 again because Jesus Christ, that thing yeah. is going to kill us the entire time. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I, if we'll figure out what we're going to do if we do a league race. We'll probably do MX5s or something for uh, oh, engine yeah, braking. Oh, yeah, make it accessible. Yeah, something fucking wacky. Or maybe the, the GT, the, uh, the G86 or whatever. That's another free car that everybody's got. But let's figure something out. Um, I just put something out on Twitter today. And I was wondering, who has better catering? Marinello, the Ferrari, or Milton Keynes Red Bull Racing? And some 30% of you are thinking that Milton Keynes would have better catering. I'm sorry, but what the what the actual? Dan, talk to me. What are you thinking? Those 30% of people are clued in because they know <laughs> that those 30% of people know that outside the factory is Bianco's Bistro. Okay, okay, that is that is the Easter egg. That is the expert S tier knowledge. If you know about Bianco's Bistro on the uh, Tilbrook site, you are clued in. And uh, yeah, check yeah, it out. I'm check sure it out. Listening. Big up Bianco. Yeah, big shout. Uh, dude, last mm -hmm. time I uh, definitely didn't have to go by Red Bull for anything to do anything at all. But last time I was there, on my way out, I definitely stopped and got a breakfast roll from Bianco's Bistro. Yep. It, and it was insane. Out. It was insane. Sausage, bacon, uh, egg, oh, brown sauce. The future. Mm -hmm. They do a lovely arrabbiata as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, the the spice, lunch. the spicy pasta. Yeah, dude, yeah. that's that's the one. That is the one. But uh, definitely. Um, speaking of, there's rumors of two Red Bull engineers joining Ferrari, and guess who it is? Uh, well, it could be us because apparently the report also said they're not top tier. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that bit. No, I didn't see that detail. Like they're not they're not top tier engineers. I was like, fuck, it could be me and Blake. Yeah, it's, it's two washed up turds, man. On flushables. I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, listeners, it's not us. I don't know who it is, but it ain't fucking us. I had a recruiter re reach out to me a couple years ago about going there, and they were super cagey. They were like, they they're like they wouldn't tell me who it was. I was like, well, what's the job for? And they're like, you'll have to come out like. When can we book your flights? I'm like, if you're not, I'm not like, if it's a track side job, I don't want to go back to the track. Is it a track side job? If I don't that, I don't want to do it. Then they just blanked me. So I was like, okay, fine. Screw you guys. I don't want to go there anyway. But, um, yeah, it's a track side F1 job. Uh, it's based in Marinello, but we can't tell you what team it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you're trying to recruit me for Toro Rosso, it's like, I, I know the people that work there, and I'm pretty sure it's not them, so just fucking tell me. They were super cagey and weird about it, and I was like, I guess I'm I don't... I was super cagey about my interview when I went 
to Red Bull. And really? Like, oh, we can't tell you much about it. And I was like, okay, well, you know, you need to tell me something about it. And they're like, oh, it's uh, it's working in motorsport, and you're going to be based in Milton Keynes. I was like, okay, well, you might as well just fucking said Red Bull <laughs> Racing. And really yeah, you know what I mean, exactly. Dude, honestly though, um, LinkedIn recruiters, there are a bunch of absolute clowns some of the things that people have reached out to me it's like hi i see that you're a performance engineer would you like to take this job as a senior manager uh, managing a high performance uh injection molding i'm like i'm sorry do you have two fucking brain cells rubbed together because that's like look at my cv that's not me but anyway no instead now you just like to post shit on the internet and uh exactly post a substandard podcast with me your best friend it's fucking great i wouldn't have it anyway sal we talk sorry i was just drinking from my mcdonald's there if you heard a weird noise that's decent that's decent that um should we get on to the monaco review and i'm gonna keep this one short because we've got so much to... we've got monaco we've got uh, the indy 500 keep it short. Ah, We're fucking I... 11 minutes in and we've not fucking really said anything of any substance yet so i suppose we better crack on oh you guys just don't you guys don't tune in for the facts you tune in for the vibes and apparently i got into an argument with um here's the thing never ever ever try to reason or have a discussion with anybody that has a driver profile picture on twitter or anybody on twitter for that matter but if they have a driver profile picture there's a 100 percent chance that they're completely irrational maybe 95 percent chance but seriously um let's let's what are we saying we're talking about Vettel pictures alonzo pictures max pictures lewis george lando any profile pictures it, it don't don't try don't try to reason with them because they they don't do that but anyway let's talk um, let's talk about monaco the build-up um let's just do it quickly because my mic arm just sounded like it was about to fall off the fucking table oh no so oh. i've got it in one hand we're good we're good oh my god <laughs> so um here's here's the big issue from the weekend did you notice the red bull energy station the swimming pool that's on the energy station which has all the iconic photos of uh, daniel belly flop swan diving into weber doing the back flip or front flip into and everybody throwing the team principal christian and adrian into the pool the pool was not full of water this year it was full of balls it was it was full of balls <laughs> yeah. and the of the plastic variety <laughs> oh, there was and a... i understand it's because they were not allowed to fill it up with water because there's a drought or something in yeah. the area that's what i heard so apparently they, they you basically can't fill up swimming pools uh in monaco because they have not had enough rain so uh yeah, that's that's the big news from the build up of the weekend. So anyway, on to Barcelona. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I didn't like free practice in Monaco is just about them gathering data, and there was nothing too crazy. We, you know, we we thought Red Bull maybe started off on the back foot, and it's like, oh, but um, that's just free practice one. I did see. Did you see this video? And there's super circumstantial videos, but it was of the turn. Uh, 14, 14, 15 chicane. You know the slow speed when we where everybody breaks their track rod on the right hand barrier and there's always the yeah, slow mo yeah. shots and glancing at what well, was a photo from behind that and it was looking down at teams taking the curb and yes there was a bunch of different you know you know if you touch a little bit of the sausage or if you just touch the little orange metal curb the bolt on those are different but the red bull going through there and just nailing that the car basically goes through that and it looks like it doesn't doesn't do anything it just literally goes around that and settles there's no bounce then there was a video, I thought it was the Ferrari, but it was actually the Alfa Romeo. And it looked like they took a similar amount of curb. And the thing literally does like three bounces on the trot. And there was a video of the McLaren going through there. And he was a little bit too hot and, you know, a double bounce and sliding quite a bit. But the Red Bull was absolutely hooked up through there this weekend. If you go through the weekend and look at the data, especially by qualifying, uh, Max's confidence into those those high speed, the high speed chicane and into the swimming pool, uh, it was mental. It was mental. That car was hooked up and nobody could get close except for one driver and i'll come back to that in the swimming pool it was wild but um have you mm. been have you, you've done monaco before haven't you yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i my favorite was when the formula Renault 3.5s the f2s or stuff were, were practicing you basically walk across the pit lane and you're on the wall looking down into that section and it's so cool seeing the cars like the, the F2s and uh, F3s or GP2s and GP3s at the time when I was there going through those sections. You see everybody watching everybody and you, know, you get a train of cars and just taking a little bit too much curb. And but you, you have to commit. You, you don't you know where it at is, but you have to commit so early to that. And 
Oh, it was awesome. What do you what do you remember from being at Monaco and, and like the, seeing stuff that you don't get an appreciation for when you're watching on the television? Uh, the fact that a large majority of spares and kit isn't actually stored in the pit lane; it's stored out in the harbor on the seawall. Yeah, exactly. There's like there's trucks in a in a multi-story car park just parked under there. Yeah, yeah. Basically, so like all the tire sets, most yeah. of them are all down there. So if you need anything like at your spares kit or anything during the event, you're you're fucked basically because you can't get there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and your spare chassis. So most teams will bring a spare chassis to the race, not two. Your spare chassis is in a truck somewhere in a car park or, or mm -hmm. in a van very far away, locked up and hidden. But uh, yeah, you're not uh, if you if you have a if you do a tub in free practice, um, yeah, you're a little bit delayed because you have to wait till the track is cold or there's no cars running in order to get that yep. car back into the garage to rebuild it. I said garage. God damn it. I hate garage. it. Garage. Garage. Yeah. But um, it's freaking wild. Man. Also like as well, the random trees that they don't cut or do anything with they just build the building around them so you could like walk into like upstairs and there's just like a random like branch of a tree going through the corner of the room or whatever it's just like, okay. <laughs> like, like up where they used to keep the snacks in the refrigerator upstairs yeah, you're like, yeah, all yeah. right yeah that's wild man that was that was something else but it's like literally that place sucks because there's you know porsche super cup f2 f3 formula renault three fives or whatever all these super loud cars and you're sat in the office on the pit straight of the circuit on the main or not the pit straight but the main straight of the circuit trying to have meetings and you've got you know you, when you have meetings at f1 team most teams have an office with headsets that are slightly noise isolating and a microphone so that you can communicate back and forth with the factory but uh dude it's it's impossible like if you've got a hangover in monaco mm -hmm. that's not much fun man and i've never had a hangover in monaco no like, no no you didn't mention it several times in the last episode <laughs> Uh, but um can we can we give a quick shout out real quick speaking of the build-up um the usual f1 crew were producing the television including some new camera shots this weekend mm. and they were absolutely shit hot big big props to to the f1 tv production crew uh yeah the monaco tv crew not, i not believe the one. it was an improvement yeah i must admit when i watched it uh at the start of the race when they did the top down shot, I, I must admit it took me about three or four seconds to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to be looking at because it was just basically a whole bunch of roof of buildings. And then I was like, "Oh right, the racetrack's there, right?" Okay. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen that bit before. A but, helicopter uh, shot in Monaco, which I've never seen before. That was dope. The uh, the shot of the hairpin at the Lowe's or whatever the hotel is called now. Forget it. But uh, that was a good one. That a top down view. I mean, it's kind of hard to see what's going on, but it was cool just to see that perspective. But uh, I loved it. Um, yeah, it was right. I don't, I don't really remember a whole lot from uh, free practices. A couple of shunts. I think, what, it, did Carlos Bennett once at the chicane? Happens. Mm. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's go to qualifying. Qualifying. Yeah, well, just rating out of 10. Me. Rating out of 10 for that qualifying session. What'd you give it, bro? Uh, I'll go... Oh, I give it... Seven purple sectors out of 10. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna give that one an eight or nine, man. I was I didn't know it was gonna happen. It, there was there was so much. Let's let's talk through it. Um, Q1. What was our what was our big event in Q1? Uh, unfortunately, um, Sergio Perez forgot to set his watch to local time, and uh, he parked the car and crashed during Q1 and not Q3. Mm. You don't want to you don't want to mix mix those sessions up. They're a lot different. No, he he mixed them up this year. Yeah, Checo started from the back. He ripped the right, left rear corner off, and did in front. I don't know if I don't know what they changed, but uh, that car was in bad shape. It was, it was ugly. Um, hopefully, I'll tell you where it was not ugly, under the floor because yeah, oh, we yeah. got to see some upskirt shots as it went up on the crane. And I think Ted Kravitz mentioned this as well because we we saw. Well, I'm jumping ahead a bit, but we saw the Ferrari. I think in the air, didn't we? We saw yeah. the Mercedes. Yeah, we saw everything. Their floors look prehistoric compared to the Red Bull underfloor. Yeah. It's a thing of beauty. Uh, you know what, dude? Adrian I... knew he goes home at night, he tucks his children into bed, and then he tucks that floor into bed and gives it a kiss goodnight. That's how beautiful <laughs> and how much he loves it. Man, that's freaking wild. I wonder if how detailed and complicated those floors are, because Adrian works, Adrian works in two dimensions at a time. 
I wonder if, like, that's wild. Look, look, look at all the different layers and the complexity of that. I don't know if that's a, a drawing board job or th straight to 3D, man. That because that Whoa, thing. Oh, that's controversial, isn't it? That thing that's is a controversial take. That thing is a work of art, though, and that that car was working really well this weekend. But we did see all those cars, and I don't I don't get too excited about looking at the floors of cars. Like everybody in the F one tech chats are oh, loving it. I, just, I like that sort of stuff. You know, I don't understand it, but I can appreciate it. You yeah, know? I, I get that, and that's that's where it stops for me. It's like I can appreciate that this looks complex, but I have to talk to an aero pervert to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, that's what we got. Checo bend it. He showed us the bottom. Um, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Lewis, uh, there's there was a lot going on, but I think we'll keep we'll cut through this. Lewis almost doesn't make Q3, and it was it was touch and go. And Bono was like, "You got, you know you've got one lap." He's like, "The tires aren't going to be ready." Everything, and Lewis pulled out a, a mega lap to get out of Q2 into Q3. Unfortunately, he did burn up uh, a further set of tires, so we only had one set of new softs going into Q3. Oof. Here's. Mm. Here's my take on Q3. Give it to me. Alcon, Alonso, or Verstappen all had the shot at getting pulled this weekend. Like, like looking at the data, looking where they gained and lost time. Um, yes, it's it's coulda, woulda, shoulda, and that's what we're here to do. If we just say what happened, I just read off the fucking results of qualifying to you, and we'd all go home, and uh, we wouldn't have a podcast. But looking at the data, Alcon really only lost out a little bit in sector in turn one. He was a little bit slow through turn one and lost out as a result of that all the way down to turn three. And maybe there was a car in front of the other cars and he didn't have anybody he was following. But if it was not for that turn one, Alcon would have been neck and neck with Verstappen. He was literally dead even. Alcon was one of the only cars that got remotely close to Verstappen's mega, mega sector three. And realistically, for, mm. that, that sector three was fantastic, but... Aston Martin was actually just poor there on every of one of Alonso's runs through this last sector of the chicanes just wasn't as strong as the other cars just wasn't just wasn't a strong man yeah yeah no it, it was I think it was very enjoyable watching them have uh watching numerous people possibly be on pole and some of them not the people that you're used to seeing um Charles was wasn't really in the fight, was he? No, I thought um, I put him down to be quite all right this weekend, but <sighs> yeah, I mean, he was about a tenth off. I mean, and that, that's that's wild, right? P three a mm. tenth off. Unfortunately, he doesn't start P three because he uh, he got caught up impeding uh, yeah, Norris. Well, I don't think that's his fault. I think that's uh, a lack of communication. They were all, all the Ferrari boys were sitting on the pit wall trying to pick out what yacht they want to go to tonight. And they were like, yeah. oh, "Fuck." Oh, we've we got to watch traffic. But like yeah. in, in qualifying, the race engineers are literally watching GPS and gaps. And I, I think they, they said that the GPS wasn't working, but it's like, you know that there's a car coming up and you're on a slow lap. Like, it doesn't matter if it's slightly glitched. You're looking at cars that are fast, cars that are slow. You've got people at the factory. You should be doing that. For a pit wall question, we are checking. We'll just be back to you after you get a three place penalty. Um, P, P3 was a tenth of a second. P6 was just not paying attention. That's what happens. Uh, and, that, and that sucks. <laughs> and that sucks. But um, Norris, Norris did a track rod in Q2. And, yep. and his car crew changed the track rod between Q2 and Q3. We gassed up the other year in Hungary. when You remember when it was wet on the way to the grid and uh, the, the crew redid uh, Max's track rod? That was, that was amazing. Um, I don't think Lando's crew got enough gas for that, replacing that track rod between Q2 two and q3 he was p10 just off the bubble got through mm. into q3 um and he he only manages to get a run in late at the end of the session and he qualifies p10 but uh yeah not bad hey hey he was there yeah that was you know a lot better than what it could have been yeah um, so yeah no big up big up you mechanics yeah seriously on the unsung heroes Seriously. If only I could uh, hire you to come and sort my vehicles out instead of having to wait days for them to get fixed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, Verstappen, for sure, absolutely nailed, absolutely nailed that Sector 3. And looking at his lap before that, it wasn't a sure thing. Like, he struggled on Turn 12, the fast left-hander. 
uh, then the fast chicane. He was a little bit off there on the lap before. And then that final lap, he pulled the whole thing together. And I saw some people, you know, being like, oh, it's just because Nando sucked in Sector 3. Like, the car just wasn't very good there in Sector 3. He that was he was improving, improving every lap, whereas Max had a wobble on his penultimate run. But I noticed something. Mm. Verstappen and Hamilton did something different than most people. Maybe not most people, but most of the people that were running up front, especially uh, Ocon and Alonso. At the end of Q2, we heard Max and GP talking about run strategy. And Max is like, the tires aren't ready. And they're like, okay, I got you, fam. And so what they end up doing is in qualifying, usually you do two runs. You'll do out lap, push lap, in lap, change tires, out lap, push lap, in lap. Two runs in Q3, right? Because you have, you, if you've done everything right and you had margin, you've saved two fresh softs so you can push like fuck on new tires in Q3. Uh, Red Bull did something different. They put enough fuel in the car to stay out for the entire session. They did an out lap, build lap, and then a push lap. In, change tires, out lap, build lap, push lap, in. Yep. And that, that people saw that like, oh, Max is going slow, but he was actually on those other laps. He was on a build lap. So we were like, why is he doing two yellow sectors on his first time lap? It's like, no, it's a build lap. Uh, Lewis also did that as well. I didn't realize that, but uh, Hamilton, or sorry, Alonso and Ocon just did fast, slow, fast, then refuel. But that was super interesting that, uh, you know, they, they kind of kept that in the pocket and they adapted after Q2 to say, you know what, this isn't working. Let's, uh, let's do a different strategy. And then in Monaco, what happens in qualifying in Monaco a lot? Uh, red flags? Yep. And that is why they fueled for the session instead of coming back in because you effectively can save it later. You don't have to waste time coming to the garage and refueling. But you're carrying a little bit more fuel around. But uh, yeah. It was, a, it, was, it was a fun qualifying session, man. I was on the edge of my seat and I was I was yeah, shocked. Shout out to uh, Track Evolution. Yeah, love that. Get some of that track evolution. I'll have some of that. Yeah, that 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 came in clutch, didn't it? I mean, what was Max's fastest lap in Q1? A one twelve three eight six, and then by the end of Q3, he was a whole second faster. Half a second a lap track evolution and getting your lap in. You don't know where the track is necessarily. Oof. Should we talk about the race? Why not? Why not? Uh, no, before we no sorry Ooh. before we talk about the race, uh, we are going for the engine mode eleven. Uh, old man rant slash slander. Oh, let's let's go. Let's hear it. I need to hear some of this. Lance Stroll. Oh, what, are you, what are you what are you doing, son? He, what are you doing? Qualified P fourteen, knocked out in Q two, while his teammate is nearly on pole. Mm. Uncomfortable conversations must be happening in that household. Yeah, and I I feel like it doesn't get any better, does it? Well, well foreshadowing, no. foreshadowing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you? What, where's your head at? I have to shout him out for that. Yeah. Oof. Where's my what? Sorry. Where's your head at on that? Like, I mean, it's it's his it's his team effectively, right? Mm. Uh, let's come, let's come so, back to let's come back to the ramifications. But what do you think about that qualifying performance? I I don't want to um, blow smoke up my own ass, but I will say that I have spoken about this maybe a year or two ago, and I said one day, maybe, if. Aston Martin are fighting at the top of the grid and Lance is costing them positions. There has to be a decision and it's going to be a tough one because oh. Lawrence is not in this. My dogs aren't very upset with this take. Yeah, exactly. Lawrence like isn't a... in this for to give his son a toy to play with. He's clearly, you know, laid down the law and basically said, look, I'm in this to win this. And they've shown but it. Are you going to win this with your son driving? Hey. That's, yeah. a, that's a trough, tough, trough. That's Fucking a tough conversation. A, a riled wide, that one. That's going to be a riled I'm wide. Wide with, I'm still not fucking <laughs> recovered from being awake 24 hours, mate. Uh, yeah, that's that's nuts, man. What could have what what could have been? What could have been? Oof, I feel you, man. And it's 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 a it's one of those things. I don't. I think Lance has improved massively. Um, because you know, at first it was like pay driver, blah blah. But it's like no, he's got used to have he's. Great starts, good in the wet, but just every now and then just doesn't show up. And it's, yeah, it's going to hurt. But I, there's so many, so many speculations and things we could talk about to say why that could be. But uh, also, again, his teammate is Fernando Alonso. The Dark Lord. The Dark Lord. It is the one. Uh, 
Yeah, somebody somebody in the stream has just said, what about Yuki and with that Honda engine in 26? Mm. Yuki son. Mm. Let's go. Um Is it time is it time for the Grand Prix Sunday? Uh sure, I believe so. I can't think of anything else that happened in mm. qualifying. Me neither. Oh, blimey. My son is very upset about that news. I'm sorry. Tell tell the little one that uh, Lance is going to keep his seat for now. <sighs> no, I'll tell you what he's upset about. It's probably because his mother has just told him that he can't throw toilet roll down the toilet. I've, that's That's been a thing. Dads the whole roll? Out there, yeah, dads and mums out there that are listening will relate to this. That uh, He's at the stage now where he tries to put an entire roll, top roll of toilet roll down the toilet. And... Uh, it's not designed for that. No, no it, it, it ain't got the facilities for that, big man. It certainly <laughs> does not. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. I can't wait to have kids. Don't tell my girlfriend. Oh, you can borrow some if you want, mate. I'm all right. I got cats. They, they had a sicky boy on the floor earlier, and I was like, oh, shit, I got to clean that up. Oh, yeah, so the, the, <sighs> the race, the whole thing that we we're talking about, Monaco is usually procession. We we're like... Can we please get some rain? Can we please get some rain? It didn't come at the beginning. Remember last year, it rained so hard that they lost power, went to the backup power and everything else. Yes. That was wild. But that didn't happen this year. But we had a really interesting start. And last week, we, we got into it. And it said never, there were people who was like, why didn't you start Max and Checo on the same strategy? Because, you know, Max came through the back of the field and stormed to the yeah. win. I was like, well, well, you should have started him on the Checo on the hard tire too. And we said never start on the hard tire. Except for in Monaco. Yeah, that's true. Except for Monaco, because the run, if you have a, if you have kind of a, a doo-doo launch, the run down to the um, turn one is not that terrible. And who do we have at the front starting off? Stroll and Alonso, Bottas, Magnussen, Gasly, Sainz, Leclerc, Russell, uh, Piastri. They all started on a hard tire. Uh, Verstappen on pole on the medium. He had a good start this weekend. They, it looks like they got their, their clutches sorted out or whatever was going on there. But, um... Yeah, so as we expected, there was what was it? Hulkenberg doing some uh, bullying, some assault, some assault on lap one. A couple people. I mean, came. it was uh, it. <sighs> right, I, he got a penalty for it though, didn't he? Yeah, Hulkenberg and Joe yeah. pitted on lap one, and Perez also pit off the soft or the, the medium onto lap the hard. The, the race start. The overtake that Hulkenberg did on La Logan Sargent, I think it was. Um. I mean, he did it with both of his front wheels locked up. I, I mean, I wouldn't argue that that was an overtake. I'd argue that was a crash that didn't, <laughs> that didn't you know, it didn't come to fruition, if you know yeah. what I mean. A, a, an, avoided, a, an avoided disaster. An avoided accident more than an overtake, yeah. Fuck. Speaking yeah, of... it was a bit... Speaking a bit of uh, Florida, man, though, he got bullied in the race. He, he got, did. He got bullied hard, man. I hate to see it. Yeah, they say there are no overtakes in Monaco. Well, Logan Sargent basically said, bet. Bet. I'll just leave the door open. And he, he did struggle quite massively on some of the tires, but he was just not having a good time around there. It's a bit of a specialist circuit, that. But, uh, yeah. Well, I think he was intentionally trying to get DNF'd so he could go and watch the Indy 500. Bet. Bet. Um, Verstappen and Alonso, here's the race, basically. There's the Verstappen and Alonso group uh, at the front, and they're out. They've got a pit stop to everybody on their own, right? And then you've got the... Uh, basically Akon, the Ferraris, the Mercedes, and that group. So the first pack kicks off uh, by Hamilton. Hamilton's running... What's Hamilton running? Fourth, fifth, and he pits, and he kicks off that whole thing. Akon covers. Um, signs in P4 at lap 30 pits off of a hard onto a medium, and he's pissed off. Because they're like, don't worry, you covered covered Lewis, and he's like, I don't care about Lewis. He was he was livid, and uh, he was yeah. I get it, I get it, but there's nothing like we only had a couple sectors, and there was nothing to say that with clean air he was going to be able to pull a gap. So I don't know. I think that was not. But Monaco is about track position, and they had a chance to get it but i don't i don't think that's a, a blunder i don't know no that's that's why uh everyone started on the hearts really wasn't it because it was like right we can we can stick hearts on and uh it doesn't matter if we're slow because no one can overtake us yeah but like people talking about the rain but you're talking about it's lap 30 and they're like we might have rain in 20 laps now that's that's not the thing you you have you're not racing for 20 laps from now anything could happen 
Um, there could be a safety car. You, you've, they've got to react. And their decision was, we do not think you're going to be fast enough to pull a gap. So we're going to cover. Otherwise, you're going to fall back behind two cars or three. Not just that. So I get it. But um, yeah. So yeah, we go further down the road. And we start hearing the drivers. And you, you're looking at the onboards. You know, there's a couple, was it Max had on a uh, visor cam? And you start seeing some spots on that, the, the camera, on the, on the yeah. visor at turn yeah. five, the hairpin. George might have called it first. Yeah. It blind, um, go, what did he say? It, yeah. What did George uh, say? I think he said, Call Israeli rats and rats. Fuck's sake, cats and dogs. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going I'm to go get myself checked out. I think there is some, something you, critically wrong with my brain. Do you, you smell burnt toast or anything? Uh, I might do. I don't know. <laughs> Rats weren't and, toast weren't most uh beans on toast oh my jesus but um yeah so we're starting getting spots of rain and the, the crazy thing about monaco is you can have rainfall very very locally like literally we had the whole sector you know the one end of the track where the pit lane was was dry and then turn five six it was getting wet it was getting wetter and it was it was wettest and it's like you know this turn five to turn eight might want full wets it might want full wets, maybe not for long. So, what happens? Uh, I think around lap fifty-three, we have a couple people pit in for enters. So, they risk well, it. They go early. Go on. Sorry, I'm. I'm. You. I may be breaking your train of thought here. That's okay. Um, Fernando Alonso throws the race away. We're getting. We're get. That's where we're going. Okay. We're getting so yeah, people box for inters. Yep. So we we've got a couple people risking it for enters. The track is not fully wet. So those people boxing then are um they're like we think the rain is coming. You don't know because if it dries out, sec, sec turn five to six would have dried out and you would have been throwing it away. But a couple people go for enters. Um, Fernando Alonso, as the rain is falling on lap fifty four. They decide, you know what, this wet track is, maybe they said, I don't know what they said, but maybe they're like, uh, I think these hards might be struggling with a damp track to heat up back in sector three. Um, so why don't we, why don't we pit and put on new, new mediums? Mm. Uh, and then a lap later, both, basically everybody is something like 30 seconds off the dry laps, trying to, like you saw the, the onboards, it looks it looks like, I, you know the video of that little uh, Twingo or whatever, smashing the barriers at turn six? That yeah. that car would have been faster than a Formula 1 car through that sector, 100%. Even on its yeah. roof, probably. This 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 random Fernando Alonso going on to mediums strategy is straight out of the small team looking for a big result playbook. But they don't need to do that because they're second in the championship. They can play it safe. They can put it <clears> on like everyone else. They don't need this big win or, or like a big result to carry them through the season. You know, do you, you know what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah I, I like get a, it. It's, it's like a big risk that a smaller team would have taken if they were in that sort of position. And it's like, no, you don't need to do that. Aston, this year, you're an actual good team. You can afford to be safe and not do a silly little risk. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, man. But here, here's the thing. Right, here's he's just walking through it quickly. Lap 54, he pits for mediums. Verstappen stays out, right? So on that lap, Verstappen is out on his 54, 55 lap old mediums that are that are tired, but still going. And he's tiptoeing. He bleeds so much time. The, the gap between the drivers is 13 seconds on track at this point before pitting. Uh, the pit loss is just shy of 20 seconds. So that's how much time you lose driving through the pit lane. Uh, but Verstappen has a very cautious lap because it's super wet. And Alonso only loses 10 seconds from pitting on the mediums, not 20. The gap between the drivers is 23 seconds. A lap 55, they are both on mediums at this point, and they both pit. Alonso manages to find four seconds on track over Verstappen, so Alonso is pushing, and Max is probably being quite cautious, and he pits again, and he comes out 19 seconds behind Verstappen. Looking at Tsunoda is an example who wasn't particularly fast, he was a second or so off of lap time. So if he hadn't pit, he'd gone straight on to the inters there, uh, they would have come out ahead of Verstappen. And people argued and said, oh, Max would have overtaken him. Like, you have two of the fastest... Where? Where? Yeah, the fastest two cars on the track. How? How is 
Verstappen going to take, overtake Alonso, who is roughly, you know, within a second of each other. Even if, even if Alonso was slightly slower, if he gets track position on Verstappen, that's going to be a very tall order. The likelihood that Alonso would have come out ahead of him if he would have pit on an inter instead of a medium is extremely high. And I've had several other people in Formula One, including strategists, say, I agree with that. But profile pictures on uh, Twitter disagree with that. So that's why you should be careful about profile pictures on uh, Twitter. <laughs> so basically we lost uh, a Fernando Alonso victory. Is this what you're telling me? Well, well, realistically, they just consolidated a P2. You know, because like they they had they had gapped everybody else when everybody else throws on crap tires, yeah. But it would have been a risk for Alonso to fit the intermediate. But also at the same time, you know that the rain is high. You see other people's sectors. You see dry people struggling in sector two. You see inter people doing just as well in sector three. So they risked and said these hard tires are going to be a reliability, a liability, and the rain will not get worse. Is what the, was what the they banked on, and it was it. It didn't cost him anything, except a chance, but, ah, P2. I'll take a fucking P2 all day long. All they need to do is keep scoring all those points, but Alonso's going to have to score a lot more points than just P2 and P3 if uh, Lance is going to be finishing P14. Mm. Where do you finish? Slowly, slowly but surely we're getting there. Where did, uh... To the Fernando Alonso P1. I can't even find him on the sheet. Oh, he DNF'd. That's why I can't find him, yeah. Ouch. Dead last. Yeah. yeah, DNF. That's why I couldn't yeah. find him. I was like, wait, he started like 14th or something. Oof. Um, but yeah. Uh, we also had something else happen during the race. Did you hear did you hear this? I know, but this really sucks. Yuki's been a I mean Yuki this and then King is not good. Max Max the other week, but um we, we we're getting get, we're getting all the shout outs. We're getting roasted. Do you how much did you pay Max for uh for Miami? Um, nothing. I gave him the Wi-Fi password. Okay. Uh, I didn't. I I basically told Yuki if he wanted if he wanted to carry in some Apex Legends. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, hey, no, I, I said to Max, I wouldn't wouldn't aim at him when I'm on I racing with him. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks to Rory for sending me that clip. By the way, you're a legend, bro. But um. Yeah, so, so Sunoda had brake issues, and he said something. It was hilarious. His engineer set him offset five, which is his engineer telling him to change the brake balance in the wet. And Yuki says, "Are you trying to crash me?" Yeah. But that's that's a really interesting thing, right? Because let's let's, let's let's can we geek out for a minute? Sixty seconds. Uh, yeah, you crack on. I'm just laughing in the background. <laughs> Yuki, I fucking every time you use on the radio, it's just gold. I love it. I know, but this brake sucks. I love him. He's actually an insanely nice dude. I really like Yuki. But so what his engineers were telling him to do was go minus 5% on the brake balance. And you think, wait, that puts more brakes on the rears than makes the car more pointy. The the problem is, um, yeah, I don't know if they're telling him minus 5 because going rearwards in the wet makes sense because you don't have as much load transfer and your optimum brake balance is much rearward of a dry brake balance, especially. But if you don't have any grip, you don't have that much load transfer. Or, You're talking to me in a language I don't fucking understand. I don't understand brake setup, so this right. is all you, baby. Well, I think the other thing was maybe the front discs were glazed, and they were trying to get him oh, to go yeah, forward too, to heat them cold. up. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like you glazed carbon carbon material by not applying by applying low pressure when they're cold, and the interface of the disc and pad gets all gummed up and shit up, and they don't make friction. And the only way to blow through that is to get them hot as fuck. So like when we would have brake glazing. You would tell the driver to focus on only straight line braking and try to get them to wake back up first instead of like, you know, trying to trail brake or like dab the brake through the corners because then that just makes it worse. So I, I think that was a, yeah, that's, that's a really, really tricky thing to sort out, especially when you have, you know, another thing is when it goes cold and wet and you're not applying the brakes as much, did they add any brake tape at the stop? And that's something that you will do. It's like if, if you're going on to enters, very often you do need to add it's definitely onto full wets you definitely need to add the tape so the mechanics can add tape to approximately blank off the ducts in a pit stop but it does cost extra time but look that at what look at what happened to you high, high techno highly technological solution in f1 just slap a bit of fucking tape on it yeah yeah exactly but uh yeah i remember that that's super sketchy like when you're starting a wet race 
and you're like, how much do we blake, blank the brakes on the race start? And uh, if it's full wets, you can get away with it. But if it's enters, often you'll fucking risk it and just be like, hey, we might have some glazing to deal with. Uh, lads, get on with it. Please stop saying glazing because you're making me think of... Um, should we get some Dunkin donuts? donuts. Yeah. Let's go get... Me... <sighs> let's yeah. go get... Let's, we should have a Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. That's the one I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. Why don't we... Uh, what do we got left? So... Oh, Russ, here's another good one. Russell shithousing his way. He's like, all right, mate, let me, let me, uh, can you do it for me real quick? What, what was Russell doing the shithousing about? Oh, blimey, mate, get him out of the way. Yeah, so Russell was trying to get past Hamilton because he did close up on him super fast and then he fell away. But Russell got a five second penalty for rejoining the track in an unsafe manner. I think it was at turn five he went off and he just fucking yeeted it back onto the track in front of some gazes. And, um, yeah, yeah, he got a five second penalty. So he wasn't gonna stop mm. again. So they're like he's like, I, I need to I need to make up the gap. I think it was to was it gas man? Uh no, I can't recall. It was, Le, was... Leclerc. How, and how Leclerc couldn't close up on the uh Mercedes. Ouch. Mm, and then Perez driving into the side of George. Oh yeah, they they just... they crashed in the, the escape road. <laughs> yeah, there was, I swear there was like a, a radio message from Perez to George as that happened. He come on the radio. I'm not gonna do the accent. He came on the radio and went, "This is for Max in Baku." Crash. <laughs> <laughs> How's your side pod, mate? <sighs> oh, oh, I'm not even. Yeah. I'm not even gonna talk about Perez's race. That was just like P20, risk it, see what happens. Nothing happens. Everything bad, bad for to worse. Man that is really good at street circuits traditionally he was mm. I, I don't know if he was and maybe he had a hangover i don't know but wow what a race yeah perez p16 stroll dnf uh the the Haas has had another terrible race as well unlucky and the ferraris didn't look i mean the ferraris just went from crap to crap somebody just reminded me of this in the chat i will big this up because i thought this was beautiful and it's something max has done in the past Ooh, go on when max was getting blue flags around people checo tried to sneak behind him and get an overtake as well uh i can't remember who it was on but it was brilliant i was like oh that is shithousery and i enjoy it i i rate that move mass but that that's awesome like they're like it's like i'm not gonna risk my race but if you can follow me through i'll open the door let's 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 go man let's freaking go i'm into it but uh yeah, Max did that a few years ago at Monaco. I can't, and it was it was beautiful then, and this was beautiful as well. I didn't pay off. I think Perez, um, yeah, uh, overcooked it and had to give the place back. But it was, I appreciated the effort that went into that. Yeah, man. But um, Signs Signs loses out. What does what does Signs do? He goes from Carlos Signs. Does he start P four on the grid or P three? And where does he finish? Eighth. Unlucky. Unlucky, mate. Yeah, it was... Uh, well, we'll go into that in a little bit because I've got Ferrari for random fandom. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go back to uh, my little report for Ash. But before we get into our, um, our race predictions and how we did and our random fandom and good boy and the Indy 500, why do, do you want to go to a little, uh, little ad break real quick? Oh, I would love to. Okay. Hello, it's me again. Just to tell you that we are continuing our deal with NordVPN. To give you an exclusive offer. You can get it by going to nordvpn.com slash engine to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan and four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. They have a super simple app that you can use on your phone, your tablet, your PC. And it's something that I've used myself for years and I've been completely happy with it the entire time. And it's just in time to get around that potential geographical restrictions for F1 TV. Obviously, I can't say you should do that because that's probably illegal. But, you know, so yeah, go to nordvpn.com slash engine. So me and Blake can feed our families. Thank you. One take. Nailed it. We nailed, nailed it. it. I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. I'm Thank really you. proud of you. Everything else has gone to shit, but at least I got the right button. <laughs> <laughs> so 
talk to me. Let's talk to me. Talk me through the predictions, man. Talk me through the predictions. We made before every week. We make predictions for this. We're gonna make predictions for Barcelona, uh, yep. and we need to tell you how badly we did this week for both qualifying and the race. Uh, I uh, well, neither we didn't do too badly in qualifying. We both had okay. Verstappen on pole. Okay. Uh, I was optimistic and put Leclerc second. Not bad. Uh, uh, Perez third. We won't talk about that. Mm. Mm. Alonso fourth, Sainz fifth. Okay. Oof. So I had Verstappen, Perez. We know how that ended. Unlucky. Uh, Dark Lord, Hamilton, and uh, the Governor. Yeah, called Blimey. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't terrible, was it? No, like you say, we both got Verstappen. Uh, Alonso was P2. Charles was P3. Uh, Ocon, P4. Signs P5. So, I got P5 and P1. It's just the bit in the middle I got wrong. <laughs> yeah, I got... I got Paul. That's it. Bummer. Uh, race predictions. Time to delete the podcast. Yeah, see you guys later. The most fraudulent podcast. Episode 28, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been here since the beginning... Uh, and you, why. Yeah, why <laughs> first. And then uh, give yourself a big toot toot. <laughs> um, all right, the podium. Your prediction was fairly spicy, I thought. A little arrabbiata, that one. Yeah, Talk a little arrabbiata. Uh, Charlie. Yep. Chuck. 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 P1, Verstappen, P2, Alonso, P3. Okay. Did you... I'm going to call Max and let him know that you shit on him. Just yeah, kidding. Why not? <laughs> um, I, I went for Verstappen, Perez, Alonso. I thought Checo was going to be in the mix. I, I, I expected... I, I even gassed up Aston Martin before the event thinking... It's a low down for or low efficiency high drag circuit. You can put a dirty, dirty rear wing on the car. I think Alonso could do well. Um, I went Verstappen Perez Alonso. And then we got a Verstappen Alonso. Who had Ocon podium on their bingo card? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, Probably not. No, I don't think anybody had that. And let's here's a funny one. Did you see uh Laurent Rossi was shitting on Otmar and everybody else and being like, mate. You, you, yes. This is you, this is your problem, and then he's like on all the team photos and Monaco. Like, hey, we let's go, guys, go yeah, team. Yeah. You just slack the team off, and now you're quite happy to just stand there getting your photo with them. Yeah, get out of here, dude. Get out of here. This is bell end. Yeah, but hey, SD besties on the podium. I was, I loved that man. I, I like to see it. And like, I know he's he's one of those drivers that rubs people the wrong way, and uh, uh, everybody that worked with him at Aston Martin or at Force India back in the day really rated the dude, and he's hungry, man. He's cutthroat, and I think. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. And it's, honestly, um, I've still not forgiven him for the Max Verstappen Brazil incident. Yeah, I've still got PTSD from that. Yeah, it's like he's coming through. He's he's unlapping himself. It's like, give it a second. Give it a second. Nah, but uh, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, Laurent Rossi, that was get out of there, dude. Wash your face off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, Ocon said. Uh, Ocon said, "SD besties on the podium." Yeah, on he said, "Yeah." And oh he, he was like, "SD besties on the podium, baby." Oh my I was god! Like, oh, yeah, that was quite funny. Oh my god. Um, let's go to. Uh, do, you, do you have the random fandom bit? Question. Do I? Do I? Random fandom. Two for two, baby. Nailed it. Production value. Sign plus, us plus, up. Plus. Sign us up. So, to, what's, what's Random Fandom for anybody that's new to the podcast and they don't know what it is? Random Fandom is basically where we randomly pick a team each to hype up for the upcoming race. And then we'll give a little report about it afterwards. Uh, this came about because, obviously, being two X Red Boy engineers, we have a disgusting bias. It's foul. And... It's, 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 you can taste it, actually. Yeah, I, I wanted everyone to know that we could hate every team equally. <laughs> no, nobody uh, is free from nobody. my hate. No, exactly. But but we have said that we won't rate Red Bull. We take Red Bull out of the draw. And we're going to draw again for Barcelona. But who do you have this week, Dan? Talk to me. Uh, unfortunately, if you couldn't tell by their performance, uh, obviously it meant that I had Ferrari for this week's random fandom. 
And Blake, if you look in the notes, you'll see uh, I haven't actually written anything down for my random fandom Ferrari report um, this week because I can sum it up very simply. It was a shit show. Mm. Um, nobody telling Chuck where the traffic was in qualifying cost them three positions in a track that you can't take over at. Yep. Uh, so- Signs decided to fight his teammate on the way to the pits in the wet on slicks. They were battling to try and get position in the pit lane. Um, Signs was just a bit all over the show today or during the race. And uh, yeah, basically it was one podium in the last six races. They, they were outclassed by Alpines around Monaco. Fuck is going on with that team. Wow. I mean, I know they're in a period of rebuilding, but rebuild these i don't like again people listen to this and think dan spends his entire time just hating ferrari i don't i actually like ferrari i respect their heritage i want to see them come good me too i want to see i want to see four teams at the front i want to see the midfield closer to the front but with ferrari and and mercedes this far off we we get asked we get we get verstappen and alonso fights and maybe and Prez when he's not having a crap weekend, which is this is his only real crapper weekend. So hopefully he comes back. But this is it's just yeah, it's frustrating, man. It's super frustrating to see. But however, obviously Ferrari knew that I had them on the random fandom, uh, or at least Carlos Sainz knew because there was literally like a sn- minute second shot in the uh, world feed of him on the grid before the race started. Yeah. And he was sneakily trying to drink a Red Bull from his trainer's bag without anyone noticing. So I saw it. I fucking saw it. (laughs) He's like, mate, I'm a little bit tired. I need a hit of the good stuff. None of that monster stuff. We need the, we need the, the Toro. (laughs) So, wow. All right. That's, that's on him. That's fraudulent behavior. (sighs) Any other words for, um, your Tifosi? Oh, hang in there. Yep. You know, yeah, um, crying session round mine tomorrow at eight pm. Bring okay. snacks. Okay. Fine. I had Aston Martin, and I've, I feel like I've already given most of this report card. And uh, but let's let's sum it up now. Honestly, uh, they've got probably second or third best car on the circuit on the on the on the grid. Second or third best car. Um, Mercedes are close. Sometimes they'll be a little bit better than Ferrari. Ferrari dropped the ball. But I mean, if we go back and look at their qualifying performance, uh, Alonso made the difference in that car. Lance could not get within a sniff of him. And Lance has not been that far off in a while. That I recall. Maybe I've got some recency bias, but who knows? Um, I'm a fraud. That being said, Alonso the Dark Lord ringing everything out of that. Like he said in, in, in uh, qualifying, I'm driving like an animal. He was driving like an animal. Lance didn't show up, crashed the car out uh, in the tricking conditions. I mean, let's let's look at the championship right now. I've got my championship notes. Where'd they go? Did I delete them? I can tell you that Mercedes are one point behind Aston. Oof. Oof. What do we got here? So, the World Constructors Championship, Red Bull 249, Aston Martin, Aramco Cognizant, Force India, Racing Point, uh, Spiker, Midland, Jordan, F1, 120 points. Mercedes, 119. Ferrari, 90. Renault, Alpine, 35. Fernando Alonso, 93 points in the Drivers' Championship. I mean, Fernando's not too far off of Perez with that result this weekend Mm -hmm. for Perez. Uh, Take a guess where Lance is. Uh, Well, on the table. Yeah. Uh, I think I looked at this earlier, and I think it was something like ninth. No, not ninth. He's he's P eight with two retirements. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, close. What was was Saudi? What his retirement was a mechanical, wasn't it? Uh, he had. Did he not have one where he didn't drive because he broke his wrists or something? When was that? Was that the first race of the season? No, he 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 drove. He drove. Oh, was it okay? He did drive. Yeah. Oh, he missed the... testing, didn't he? Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Uh, so he that that retirement's on him. So that could have been a handful of points if he'd qualified well, but. Uh, honestly, for the team as a whole, great result, great performance, uh, maximized. I don't, I, people talk, took my tweet about Alonzo could have won as me slating the team. 
that's a super hard decision to make. And we talked about all their options and what they could have done um, in that situation. They just tossed the wrong coin. Yeah, well, I'll slate them because yeah. I'm never getting invited anyway. Okay. It was a bozo decision from a small team mentality. Okay. I mean, but that's the kind of stuff that has to, like they have to do because you're outside of the points and you hail Mary it. That was, I think. Yes. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I was trying to make. Okay. And uh, shout out Haas as well. They were fucking nowhere this weekend as well. Hmm. Yeah, I I didn't enjoy watching that, honestly. That was that was tough to watch. But hey, double points finish for McLaren. Big up. Yeah. Um I th is it time for the is it time? Hit it. Fraud watch. Fraud watch. Hmm. So fraud watch is where we take a moment out of this podcast to put put people on blast for having a, a terrible a terrible weekend um and I mean, uh, we're not short of candidates this weekend no i mean uh, devries is on three strikes he's been banned um he's permanent crap listed uh mclaren are they mclaren are done mclaren are toast you've roasted them three times unlucky but yeah uh ferrari ferrari have been done man we've got we've got a couple people fire on one strike who do you got for Fraud Watch this week, man? Talk to me. We guys. have a new entry on oh my. the Fraud Watch list, Don't I say believe. It. And the first time in uh, engine breaking history, ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you my fraudiest Fraud Watch of the weekend? No, dude. Sergio Perez. No, man. Oh, that's you tough. You were nowhere. My man was still out there partying on that yacht he was on last year. I don't know if he, he's he was nowhere. Ugh, that sucks, man. I hate to see it. I mean, because because I mean, he went into the weekend. Was it just a just behind Max? I mean, not too far behind. Yeah, closer than he has been. You yeah, know? they've been quite evenly matched in terms of points this year. Um, but he just threw it all away this weekend. It was just yeah. I mean, this, not, it was not looking good. This is his year to to challenge. This is his Nico Rosberg year, the underdog story to take take the knock the dude off the top step and take it. But you can't you can't do that. But it's a it's a long season. We're on race, well race six, but race seven of the calendar. So because we lost Emma, fair enough. Uh, my fraud watch this weekend. I've just uh, I've just got this one. I know, but this break sucks. Yuki's brakes are on Fraud Watch. That's kind of a boring one. Should I do another one? I'm happy to have Yuki's brakes as yeah. our fraudiest Fraud Watch. I don't mind. We can put anything on there, mate. This is our show. We make the rules. Okay. Yeah. That was just that was just that just sucks to see because like that being my old bread and butter, and you're like him him a struggling to have the dialogue with the engineers, and just literally threw away a pretty decent like an okay ish result. It was nothing crazy. Just like meh. It's been annoying. I wasn't too inspired because the the other obvious ones are Lance Stroll on this race or Logan Sargent, yeah, unfortunately. Obvious. Those, Another those, obvious one. Yeah, there, was, there was so many good candidates this weekend. I'm going to put Stroll on the list, honestly, because he was on my... Uh, unfortunately. But I, I think he'll... I don't think this is a, a prediction of future performance. It was just the result for this weekend, unfortunately. Yeah, I think, I think everybody agrees. So, uh, yeah. Next. What is happening next daniel uh i believe it is oh you did it who's a good boy i am i'm a good boy that's that's ladies it. and gentlemen it's the engine mode good boy award that came about because somebody said i was gaslighting people on twitter or something oh, i can't even Vir remember you were now the origins of it virtue signaling is what you were virtue doing virtue signaling that was it yeah, yeah when right, you okay and they called me engine mode good boys so i was like okay cool yeah that's when you when you make note of predatory or terrible behavior that people might not understand that means you're an engine mode good boy. no but this is about us giving props to somebody who's done a great job this weekend so dan take it away who is your engine mode good boy of the week ladies and gentlemen we have another new debutante for this week's engine mode good boy and it's i can't believe we've never suggested this person before but uh car merchant isn't it ladies and gentlemen it's uh max cast happen oh my god <laughs> Well done. Bravo, mate. Bravo. 
He's made it on to our engine mode. Good boy. I think that's his first I time, just, isn't it? He's just done a great job this weekend. Yeah, yes. I think I believe it's his first time. Smashed it. And uh, the the ceiling the ceiling of the deal for me was that Q3 uh, sector free performance. Mm. I was just like, yeah, go on then. Yeah, Annabelle knows what's up with that one. Yeah, smashed it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna give mine. The Esteban Ocon. I never thought I'd have Esteban Ocon on my good boy list because usually he's a, sometimes he's a bit of a, a bastardo, isn't he? He's just like one of those guys he likes to get get into shit. But uh, Esteban Ocon in that Alpine, showing them what it could do on a track that requires a good car and a driver with a shitload of nerve, precision, and consistency. And uh, he achieved all of those things this weekend. And I, I think yeah. he deserves a uh, a yeah. little. Uh, and if you if you hadn't picked him, I would. So. Yeah. Fair enough. And it's beautifully poetic that it comes two weeks after their owner was in the media trashing the team. Yeah, get wrecked, Rossi. That that guy, that stinks to me. Like, slandering your team in the press. That's the same thing as Franz Toss, like, slandering his team. That's, like, do not roast your crew in the media. Like, mm. that, that is leadership 101. What do you aim to achieve from that? Screw you, man. Seriously. That pisses me off. Because if imagine if you were still at Red Bull, uh, and like your, your your car crew had a bit of a wobble, and you know it's maybe something that's kind of hard to pinpoint, and and Christian put you on blast. You don't see him doing that when you when you fuck up. He'll be like, we'll, we'll come back and learn from it. Or most of the team principals will do it, except if they're small, small brain energy like that. Fuck them. Um, see, why don't we why don't we step over into the world of freedom and the miraculous. <sighs> For Indianapolis, first time, first time ever, five hundred. The first time we've well, we we did have Connor Daly on our podcast a while back. Um, I suppose, yeah. I was very, uh, I was not very well, and I was quite high on medication during that episode. So, yeah, I, I think don't remember a lot. Well, I think we'll have to have Connor back sometime to reflect on that. But um, we I, this was my first time watching the Indy five hundred start to finish. I've watched bits and pieces of it when I caught it, um, and usually for the past whatever I've, i was in monaco on an airplane during the race so it was like we we're flying back from monaco it was mostly like i had a message from one of my buddies they just mm. finished they got done having a beer after celebrating winning the race and they're like yeah i'm gonna miss the 500 because uh yeah i'm on a plane so confession time go on i watched the indy 500 this um this weekend talk to me it was also the first ever IndyCar race I've ever watched. I've never watched IndyCar. Oh my. I've not watched that many races, to be fair. To be fair. I just, um, I, so, my schedule for Sunday was finish at 24 hour. That came to a, a finish at 12. And then I was like, hmm, I could watch Monaco. And then I'll watch the Indy 500. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, did what I do every year when I watched Monaco and fell asleep by lap two. Yep, standard. So I had to go back and rewatch it today. Um, woke up just in time for the start of the 500. So I thought, okay, I'm going to watch the 500. If I, you know, I missed Monaco, let's watch the 500. Let's do it. And I live tweeted my experiences on Twitter. So if you want to laugh, go. That have was, a, look that at was that. a really good thread because it's it's literally uh, F1 diehards first reactions questions honest thoughts about what's happening what do i notice what do you observe and i think that, that was yeah, super I had, cool to watch. i had no idea that they could they got they got something they can use to shift the weight balance left or left to right that's called the, the old jacker yes yeah weight jacker or whatever they call it i had no idea that was in the car and now when they've said it out loud i'm like damn that makes a lot of sense when you're racing on an oval that's super cool yeah oh yeah. yeah brother. And then i noticed like the weird little things like the headrest on one side is significantly thicker i'm like well yeah it makes sense they're on the pad it's like yeah. uh the guy that sprays water on the back near the fuel yeah they refuel it because it's an invisible flame because it's ethanol or whatever it was yeah it's like what 85 percent ethanol or something there's really yeah, high ethanol it, it content you can't see the flame flame yeah um the bowl of petunias that was next to the the camera on the wall shot i don't know why that was there but i'm glad it was yeah i'm gonna get some for my house honestly i like those those are those are pretty nice touch but uh, uh, yeah, I, I watched it. I for the first, I don't know, let's say a hundred laps, I was a little bit like, this is just driving around in a circle. I, I don't understand what the fuss is all about. But then, as it went on, I saw I got it, and I was like, okay, I get it now. It's like a slow build up, and it just sort of builds into this crescendo of like the last stint where everyone just goes mental. Um, 
But unfortunately, we had like red flag after red flag. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize this either. Uh, Thomas in the in the Twitch chat said the the flowers are a memorial for a passing of someone there. So I'm assuming, yeah, that's that's sad. It's a nice touch, though. It looks, it's it's fitting for a very spectacular, majestic race circuit. The the brickyard, the the yard of bricks. Yeah, uh, dude, honestly. So I I wasn't crazy about the the song at the beginning, and I know that's part of the tradition, but seeing the cars line up three wide on the start and just watching that i actually seriously got emotional watching that it was it was it was quite it was grand it was seriously grand um i i feel like i, I feel like the, the it's difficult for me because without having context and knowing what's going on like when you have cars out of sequence it's kind of hard to understand it's like who needs to stop for fuel who needs to stop I mean, it's not really tire limited as far as i can tell often it might have been sometimes in this place but um, yeah, it's it's like who's on who stopped? Who's going to come out on the lead on the final bit? But um, if you if unless you follow every stop, it kind of takes up a little bit of capacity. I think the broadcast or the tower could do a little bit of help with that with who needs to stop. But um, yeah, I did. So I watched it on Sky Sports F one in the UK. That's that's where you, where you watch it, and um, that was one of my observations as well. I was like, okay, cool. I've got the time in tower, and I was like. I much rather would prefer to see lap times, but then I was like, okay, no, actually, gaps makes more sense because I can see who's drafting and whatnot. Yeah. But, um, yeah. No. To echo your point, it was a little bit like when people started splitting strategies. I was like, it's kind of hard to follow who's pitted. Yeah. When. Yeah. Exactly. Who's who's, I, I who's effective that. race leader? Yeah. yeah I, I think I think no. I think that's something. But even then, when you get into multi, you know, Formula One's easy because it's a, it's often it's been one stops lately, so it's like uh, they haven't pit yet. They have to pit again, and are they within twenty seconds? Fine, but I, I think that's I think that might get better with uh, watching it more. I dude, I watched a European stream of the race, right? But every time the the broadcasters went quiet, I knew that the Americans watching on television were getting an advert. It was literally two minutes on, two minutes off, two minutes on, two minutes off. I was like, Jesus Christ, man! Uh, mm. See so the the Sky Sports feed in the UK. We had. Um, every now and again, you'd get a, a commentator, American commentator, giving you an advert. I think I heard the word Firestone tires about 500 times in a minute. Um, but then I think when they switched to like a proper, proper commercial, we randomly ended up in a UK studio with uh, a couple of, yeah, I can't remember who they were now, Mark Blundell, I think one of them was, and some commentator dude in the UK. And they'd just give you like three minutes of info and then just back to the race. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. <laughs> One of my buddies who was um, used to be a performance engineer for uh, several teams, um, he was like, Sky co the, the Sky commentary was not spectacular. <laughs> he was like, they definitely do know that. That's not, you know. So ah, I get it. Uh, fortunately, I just had silence. I could just hear the cars uh, during the uh, ad breaks, which was glorious. And it was like, oh, I can finally focus. Um, dude, so I thought P Pato had a shot to win it. Remember last year, it was Ericsson and Pato Award for the W. No, I don't. Because it, 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 this is the it, first one I've watched. So it you was, tell me. I, I watched that. It was Pato and Eric. I'm pretty, from the commentary sure. that apparently this is what happened. Yeah. So, and he was like, "Can he redeem himself?" And then he full sends up the inside of Ericsson, and he doesn't think Ericsson gave him any space. And when you watch the onboard, it looks like, uh, yeah. But he's he's reckless. He's bold. He's fast. He's fiery. And uh. It, but it was a, it looked opportunistic, but not a whole lot of space. One of those weird ones, but shit happens. Uh, Ericsson kept it on the road. And then we had the Abu Dhabi 21 of IndyCar. The, you know, so there was the repeated yellow, is it yellow mm. flag or red flag to the end? And what a lot of people were expecting was that you need a pace lap and then a green lap. Yeah. Whereas the red flag at the very end of the race meant that you basically went flying right away for the final lap of the race and people apparently that's a thing like they, they don't have they can the race director can choose that it's not it's not like it has to be that way but the ironic thing was is everybody was roasting erickson was upset because new garden uh started second or third on the row and got past him for the for the win the indy 500 and did you know that you get a shitload of money for doing it back to back indy 500 win i think they were I, I think they said during the commentary, someone was like Marcus Ericsson, someone's offered him $420,000 if he does it back to back. And I was like, 
Is this like a 420 thing that I just don't understand or something? I don't know. Yeah. But that, that is wild. So you can imagine he was a little upset about that. But um, so New Garden gives him the slingshot, grabs 12th gear and slides right past him for that, that win at, at the Indy 5, Indianapolis 500. Yeah. All I know is that next year, me and you need to get to the snake pit. Done. Sign me up. But uh, it was funny because people started digging out Erickson's tweet from Abu Dhabi 21 saying spectacular, great finish, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, how you like that now, man? He was like, he, he basically thought that the finish uh, was, was not fair. Yeah, I don't know. I think, again, first race. So I'm not going to sit here and talk with any authority. Me neither. Me neither. Um, but I thought it was, it's, it seemed pretty obvious that if you're only going to have one lap, that the draft is so powerful that whoever's first on that last lap is not going to cross the line first. Mm. <laughs> Uncle Elias had a good one. So one, one, one of the previous restarts, Pato was leading it, right? And the, the, and the, the, the race starter said, you're going too slow for the race restart. So they made them do another lap. All he had to do was do another slow lap and just pato it. And he would have taken the, the checkered under yellow. Ah, uh, An another great one from a beast. I like that. Beast rim was, uh, in, in the, uh, grandstands at turn two where that tire yeeted over. Did you see yeah, the tire wow. smack yeeted just misses the grandstands and smashes into a car. The lady whose car it was they found her and they invited her out and they gave her yeah. a lift home and uh, i saw that on twitter they're, they're there's they're just like, like a photo of her on the finish line or whatever and the safety car and that yeah they're like please don't sue us please don't yeah, sue I was, us i was like it's I america replied. i nearly replied like saying oh i hope that fucking safety car is her new car you've just given her yeah yeah exactly but uh, man yeah I no that was a wild fucking tire failure thing i really enjoyed that and i would really like to go to an IndyCar race. I think next year, here's here's my, here's, so here's my list for next year, right? I, we could, we, I would love to go out and do some content. I think we could have a lot of fun. I think we could offer a lot of insight and we've got a great network right. of people. Listen, if the red flags boys can get out there, fuck it, we can get out there. If them two jokers, those right, guys are, and I'm talking to you two, I know you're- Those I know guys are so fucking yeah, good. I right? love those guys. If you two clowns can get invited, so can we. I, I gotta give it. I gotta give it up to another F1 podcast. So if you haven't checked out the Red Flags podcast, those guys are awesome. Um, Matt, Brian, and and the producer Jenny are all absolute class. They've got a. They've got an excellent, an excellent podcast. Um, but uh, they were out there having. They live and living their best life out in uh, Indy. But I think next year I want to go to Talladega. I want to go to the Indy 500. I want to go to Daytona. Rolex, baby. I want to go to that Nurburgring 24, and I want to go to my second. 24 hours of Le Mans because I'm going this year uh, in two weeks 24 hours of Le Mans oh. boom yeah I'll, I'll be doing it next year let's go uh, campsite uh, yeah yeah. let's go alright cool yeah Sebring I, 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 I'm gonna get out there I, I, I wanna go to some uh, I wanna go to a Formula 1 race again this year but man somebody call me if you want us to take us live break reviews we got you we got yeah. you I'll, I'll happily go to another Formula One race, but I'm not prepared to pay for it myself yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's talk after this. I got an idea. Seriously, I've got an idea. I'll talk to you after this. All right, uh, plans are in motion. Yep. We're, we've got something sorted. So, you want to go to an F1 race? Seriously? Yeah, I'll fucking take a freebie. Right, cool. Let's go. All right, cool. I'll talk to you after this. I um, tend to care. All right. You will care. All right. Barcelona preview. Circuit de Catalunya's um, circuit changes. They got rid of the they got rid of the chicken at the end, brother. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That F1 slow speed curving rejoice. mother trucker, them them chickens. They got rid of them. So the chicane is gone. It's now just two faster than hell right handers, and people have estimated that puts the track around four or five seconds a lap faster. Um, it could make some interesting differences to set up because without the chickeny, you might need not need to run as stiff. You might be able to run stiffer because it's uh, yeah, it's it's a fast one, and I think everybody, everybody is happy about getting rid of the chickeny. So yeah, uh, other yeah, I don't think there's a single person I've seen that's complained. Now, uh, other great news in 2018, the toilet blocks were upgraded because they were absolute shitholes before. They were shithole oh. shitholes. It's another engine breaking uh, circuit trackside toilet review, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah, we'll, we'll need to go back. I'll get some. Uh, I'll get. I'll have some people on the ground in Barcelona. Um, I definitely know a couple people. I'll ask them for a toilet review, and we'll uh, preview it next week. Seriously, Thank remind you, me that yeah. chat. Remind me that in the Discord. Um, right. So, 
I got a couple stories from Barcelona. I got a couple. My first race in Barcelona, 2012. I was Paul Dressa's performance engineer. Um, the Saturday night before, the, the tire expert for the team, we went to a tapas restaurant, and he does this thing where if your glass is up on the table and you're out, um, he just fills your cup up with whatever, and they had like a rujo or something, the, like the herbal liqueur. And uh, yeah, I must have had like a lot of those, and I, I didn't have hangovers. His back is bad back in the day, but it was pretty rough. Uh, I screwed up fuel in qualifying, and GP had to save me. That was good. Uh, I also oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, I'm also pretty sure that that was the race that I had to take a piss during the middle of the race. I'm running the fuel sheet. Um, yeah, that was that was not good. I I ran. And I don't think I washed my hands to save time. Mal Pastor Maldonado won that race. And here's here's a here's a, hold on. I've got I've got a thing. Hold on, hold on. We have got to do something real quick. F1's wackiest rumors, theories, and conspiracies on this episode of the Fraud Files. So, Fraud Files conspiracy theory time. People have rumored that since it was Sir Frank Williams' birthday on the 2012 Spanish Grand Prix, the Williams looked especially quick that weekend. And there's several instances in the past where when it was like some, you know, momentous day or a celebration or a, an anniversary or something, Bernie, Bernie would give somebody a little treat. And the rumor was that they gave Williams some special fuel that gave them a little bit of an extra oomph. Maldonado was insane. He was rapid fast. So, the rumor is that they, they gave Williams some special fuel and Maldonado was sailing so that Frank Williams could have a, a, a great celebration for his birthday. Mm. Rest in peace. I thought it was, I heard it was special tires, but I'll nah, go with it what was you fuel. heard. It was fuel. Okay. And this is going to make sense in a minute that it was special fuel. So, you see the, the celebration. You know when some the underdog wins a race, the celebration yeah. and the atmosphere in the garage is insane? I remember seeing the, the pictures of the cameras in the garage. They didn't look, they were like, oh, ha, 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 nice. Yay. Yay. And guess what else happens? After the race, the Williams... Uh, it spontaneously combusts. The Williams garage catches fire from a fuel Bowser issue, which is the rig that used to fuel the car. They burn the evidence. Allegedly. Allegedly. So I remember, <laughs> I remember I'm in a meeting in the Force India motorhome, right? And we look out the window and there is disgusting gray smoke pouring out of the garages. There's mechanics rushing in there with fire extinguishers from every team. Everybody's chipping in. They're like, no, like, like this is, this is somebody's going to get hurt. Let's make sure there's nobody's in there. The fire brigade came out. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely wild. And that was my first time at, at a Formula One race as a performance engineer. Absolutely nutty. But uh, yeah, that's fraud files. I don't know what you think about that. <sighs> I, th I think setting fire to race fuel is um, hide the evidence, pretty, man. Pretty fucking, pretty fucking extreme. That's like using a sledgehammer, right? I mean, oh, I know what. Let's just set fire to this race fuel in this con like small contained area. What could possibly go wrong? You don't want to get caught having special race fuel. Whoops! We just burnt down half the fucking garages. It's Bernie Ecclestone, man. Come on, he's like, hey, Frank. I'm going to give you a dub. You guys going to, that's going to boost you in the championship, but I need you to make sure that nobody finds out. That's, that, yeah. that's got I Bernie all over it. I need you to commit several thousand millions of arson. Uh, anyway, um, 2016 Barcelona was the race in which Helmet decided to swap Daniel Kvyat and Max Verstappen. I was Kvyat's performance engineer in Russia. I was Max's performance engineer in Spain. Uh, this is the Rosberg era. He he and Lewis take each other out, turn four. Uh, Daniel gets a little bit unlucky with the safety or with the uh, strategy. Max Verstappen fights off Raikkonen to get his first win in Formula One. It was my first win in Formula One. It was a lot of people on that team's first win in Formula One. That was super cool. Um, and mm -hmm. then to celebrate, we moved hotels that night, and uh, I had pizza and granolas with GP and Rocky and the other performance engineer. While everybody else was getting pissed up in Barcelona. <laughs> I was I was down bad, but I was exhausted. We didn't get out of the track until super late, but yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a cool story. This year, uh, last year, Pirelli brought the hardest range of tires. I didn't see what they're bringing yet. I didn't see Pirelli's document yet. Uh, so they brought last year the C1, 2, and 3. Uh, uh, we are getting... Ooh. I, 
believe I remember this now. I believe we're getting for maybe FP1, FP2, the Silverstone upgraded tires for a test session. Ooh. Okay, so we're testing out the new tires. Do you do you know what the, is it? Are they going to bring the C0 here? Which is uh, the... I don't know what co compounds they are. I just know that we're getting, uh, I think, two test sets for each team of the Ooh. new Silverstone spec tire. Okay. And that's something that Pirelli said, ah, we didn't realize the cars were going to get faster. Darn, they never get faster throughout the season. Who would have thought? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the magic uh, special gift that they're getting this year. Yeah, but here's an no, interesting... No spicy fuel, just spicy tires. Exactly. But those are just for practice in preparation for introducing yeah. these in Silverstone. But here's the interesting thing. Last year, it was a three-shop race. It was two... Most teams did two softs and two mediums. Um, nobody really messed with the hard on, on that was fighting for anything. So is this race... like Because that, that was the hardest range of tires they had this year. And unless they bring the C0 1 and 2, it will be... If they bring C0, C2, and C3, it'll be the same tires. Uh, so, I'm sure they will bring whatever is the most boring, so we get another stupid one-stop. If we if we get forced into another uh, one-stop, I'm going to literally cry. But with without... Do you got anything else for your Barcelona preview? Like, this is a bit short, but the episode... It's like we're an hour and a half in, and you guys are know, absolute we've been, troopers. We've been going for it. Um, I don't know. Any interesting stories from me? Not really. Uh, the fact that nearly every single year... The car got broken into in the car park. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Here's another good thing. When you, you know that you're arriving at Circuit de Catalunya, because when you pull up to the circuit, there's a sewer line that runs through the place, and it smells of shit every morning. It's, yeah, there's car it's glass foul. everywhere, because for some fucking reason, everyone's cars get broken into. I don't know if that's any better now. Mm. Uh, getting changed in the car park to Hollywood. Glamorous. Fly home. Yeah, glamorous. Um and other than that, I'll just say shout out Ribs and Blues uh, in Mataro. Everyone should Ooh. go there. It's fantastic. Yeah, Mataro was uh, just a little coast, a little port town. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, I we liked it there. I stayed there with Force Indian. Like, I think like when, when you guys were on setup crew and stuff and some of the mechanics would Correct. stay in Mataro. Mm. Mataro. Um, there's a really good mom and pop tapas place, which is the one where uh, the old tire expert used to get us all lit up on the sauce on a Saturday night. But I mean, it's just Sunday in a Force India, right? Nothing's going to happen, mm. right? Our hotel was always next to the fucking train station, though. Oh, shit. That sucks. We stayed at... All you hear all night is... Mm, that sucks. Give me your predictions yeah. for qualifying, mate. Predictions for qualifying in Barcelona. Uh, spicy predictions for qualifying. Yep. They're not spicy at all. You're boring. Um, Verstappen, Perez, Alonso. Two more. Top five quality. Uh, Hamilton, Russell. Okay. I've gone Verstappen, Perez, Leclerc, Alonso, Russell. I'm sick and tired of being extravagant in my predictions. It never works. Yeah, I know. They, but like, honestly, who was going to put Ocon in last week? I'm, I'm going Magnolia paint, vanilla ice cream. This is bland of the bland. Margarita pizza. Oh, speaking of, I haven't had dinner yet. Please stop talking about food. Seriously, no. I'm down horrendously bad. Um, big shout out this weekend. I smoked a four kilo brisket on my Traeger. Can't go an episode without mentioning Traeger. It was awesome. Uh, you had Maccas. I'm gonna go get Maccas after this, probably. Um, race podium. You got uh, a, You've got a, You've got a little. Go on. Toot, spicy toot. podium. Yeah, go on. I'll give it a little. <clears throat> uh, spicy podium. Alonso. He's gonna get his win in Spain. That'd be great. That'd be great. And yeah. Scar in the chat Spanish, says the same Spanish thing. Spanish Twitter is gonna have a meltdown. Yeah. I mean, uh, Verstappen's going to be P2. Charles, for some, I mean, it's out of pity at this point. That's he's definitely a, pitiful. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to get a P3. All right. I'm um, I'm going Verstappen, Perez, Hamilton on the podium. I think I think Hamilton's going to have a good race. I don't see the Ferraris doing well at a track where last year Deg was a feature. I'm not I'm not expecting a huge offset. I mean, last year's a three stop. I doubt this will be a one stop especially with the removal of the chickeny. But... Sorry, you said it, you doubt it will be a one-stop. Yeah, I, I doubt, but I'm, I'm not going right, to be surprised. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Blake has now fucking jinxed this to be more boring than any oh other race we've had I'm this sorry. season. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, why don't we... we Now, we picked a team last week from Monaco for our I random did. fandom. We need to pick a team this week, Dan. 
Suppose we do, don't we? If anybody well, mentions anti-dive again, I'm going to lose my shit. Seriously. Oh, you're still crying about anti-dive. Yeah. Right. Who's who you want me to spin for first? Uh, spin for me. Barry Spinning says hi. Right around. Hey, Barry. Baza, hey, buddy. Uh, if you're watching. You have Mer Mercedes? Oh, yeah. Just ticked over to Mercedes. Mercedes. That would be interesting, actually, because yeah. I want to hear about their upgrades. Yeah, exactly. And this is the first time, because they brought a new package. They intended to bring it for Imola, but they've brought it for Monaco. And we won't get a good shot of what it looks like. Yeah, the performance you, you can't here. really make much fucking sense out of it in Monaco. Spain nah. will be a much better sort of... Uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Test. Yeah, oh, sure. God's sake. What do you, who do you have on your random Alfauri. thing? Oh my god. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. I'm just going to write a list of all the swears that Yuki does on the radio. Oh. Uh, oh, I know, but this really sucks! <laughs> Thanks, Done. Yuki. Right. Um, I, di I did support my local butcher this weekend. Um, Done, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I, I, I did my did bit. You support your local Barry, who's now about to climb all over your mic. Yeah, Barry's here. If you're if you're listening on the audio platforms, my big fluffy black and white cat Barry has uh, come up. He wants some attention. It's nine fifteen in the evening. He's been fed, but now he needs his evening snuggles. So we're gonna go watch some TV in a minute. Uh, right, what, who does he want for his random fandom? Uh, I don't know. I have an oh, no, I've closed the window now. Okay. Tough. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies and thanks gentlemen, for thanks for supporting your local butcher. Uh, thank you for supporting me. Um, anyone that did during the Le Mans 24 hour charity run, I yeah. was very appreciative of that for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you guys. Remember checking on your mates, tell your mum you love her, uh, checking on your nan, and uh, just, just be excellent to each other. Stop being dicks on Twitter. Fucking life's too short. Yeah, definitely. Stop being quote tweet merchants, you rats. Those are kind of fun sometimes, though. All right. Fuck off.